Western Television Company, Western Armenia, represents the most important news for today. Good day. Now let's see what news do we have for today. The National Council of Western Armenia invites you to the conference related to when the Sadar is on fire. Ahead of COP29 actions in Yerevan for the release of Armenian prisoners of war, the Museum Institute of Genocide in Armenia issued a statement. New manuscript layers will be revealed in Matena Daran in Yerevan. Arman Tatoyan, Geram Stepanyan, and leader of the Diocese of Artsakh, discussed the issue on the rights of Armenians of Artsakh. Spread of measles in Ahalkalaki. Ankara attempt to distort the Armenian history of Yerzenka. The National Council of Western Armenia, the National Association of Armenian Veterans and Supporters, the Association of French Armenian Veterans and Resistance Warriors, the Delegation of Patriotic Unions and Preservation of Historical Memory, honorably invite you to participate in the conference related to the situation in the Middle East. Entitled Why Sadar is on Fire, the conference will take place in 2024 on 13 October at 4 p.m. Antipejuan Le Pins, Hall of the Warriors, 12 Avenue Pastor, 06600. President Armen Abrahamian will participate in the conference. The ceremony will be held according to the schedule. Ahead of COP29, actions will be held in Yerevan demanding the immediate release of Armenian prisoners of war. In the Facebook post of Geram Stepanyan, human rights defender of the Republic of Artsakh, actions have been launched in different countries of the world. They demand the immediate release of Armenian prisoners of war and hostages illegally held in Azerbaijan at the UN Climate Change Conference to be held in Azerbaijan in November 2024. Former human rights defender of Armenia, Yuri Hayriapetyan, Ruben Melikian, Artak Begalarian, as well as former human rights defender of Eastern Armenia, Arman Tatoyan and Larissa Alaverjan joined the initiative. The start will be from the UN office in Armenia. The Museum Institute of Genocide Against Armenians issued a statement. The renovation works are starting at the Memorial Complex of Genocide. The location is 743 million drums from the Republic of Armenia state budget. Taking into account the 110th anniversary of the genocide carried out against the Armenians, the works will be carried out in two stages without disrupting the activities of the memorial complex. First, the problems of the drainage and irrigation systems will be solved, and then the overhaul of the Museum Institute, which will start in the middle of 2025. The memorial complex and the museum will be open to visitors throughout. Within the framework of the grant provided by the Committee of Higher Education Science of Eastern Armenia, Matena Daran acquired X-ray fluorescent analyzer equipment, which will enable us to find out the metal components used in the design of the covers of handwritten books, miniatures and letters and their quantity. With this, one of the important provisions of the development strategy of Matena Daran will be implemented. With the help of the device, the database on manuscripts will be expanded and complete, which will give a new quality to the study of handwriting. Arman Tatoyan, along with human rights defender of Artsakh, Geram Stepanyan, visited the Artsakh Diocese of the Armenian Apostolic Church. A meeting was held with the leader of the diocese, His Grace, with Bishop Vortanes Abrahamian. At the meeting, issues were discussed related to the rights of Armenians of Artsakh. The issues of preservation of Artsakh spiritual and cultural heritage were addressed too. Issues of further cooperative were discussed, especially to inform the international community about the threats to the Armenian cultural heritage in the territories under the control of Baku. Spread of missiles in Ahalkalaki. In the municipality of Ahalkalaki, acute viral and infectious diseases began to spread in the fall of 2024 after the opening of schools. According to the directors, the situation is gradually improving, but there are still many absences in some schools. In general, the situation is improving. Angara is once again trying to distort the historical facts by presenting its version on the military history of Yerzenga. Research by Taneros Demir, a member of the Yerzenga branch of the Turkish Language and Literature Association, claimed that Yerzenga's defensive lines was legally strengthened under the leadership of Shahab Pasha, emphasizing the city's vital military role. However, the reality is completely different. Yerzenga was an ancient Armenian city, known for its religious, cultural, and economic importance. 
according to the tradition, it was here in the Temple of Anahitat. Tardatus the Great confronted Gregory the Illuminator when the latter publicly confessed his Christian faith. There were five Armenian churches in the city, the most famous of which was the St. Nishan Church, founded by Gregor the Illuminator. The church was important also as the last place for the rest of Huvanis, Yerzengatsin. The Armenians of Yerzengat suffered heavy losses, especially during the massacres of 1895 and 1995. During the programs of 1895, at the instigation of the Turkish authorities, hundreds of Armenians were killed. And in 1915, during the genocide, the Armenian population was forcibly displaced and mostly killed in the Kamakh, Georgia. People of Yerzenka who survived the 1915 genocide and their descendants spread around the world, taking the refugees in Soviet Armenia, the USA, France, and elsewhere. Today, Turkey continues to distort these historical realities by claiming Shah Pasha's leadership and strengthening the defense lines. However, such arguments are aimed at hiding and forgetting the Armenian historical reality. This was all for today. I wish you a good day. Goodbye.